Well, it's even worse than we thought. Afghan President Hamid Karzai often lashing out at the United States, but now the Washington Post reports that Karzai is accusing the United States of secretly conducting bombings and terror attacks in Afghanistan, killing civilians, including killing Americans. That's right. Karzai blaming the United States, and he's not blaming the Taliban for these deadly attacks like the bombing of a Kabul restaurant. Three Americans were killed in that attack. Michael Kay is a former advisor of the UK Ministry of Defense. He joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Good to see you, Greta. Thanks for having me. So uh, things are really deteriorating uh, between Karzai and the United States, but what is this he's now accusing us of being behind all these insurgent attacks? I think what's um, more worrying about these claims uh, than previous rhetoric, Greta, than we've, we've seen from President Karzai in the past is not only um, is there no empirical evidence and they're unsubstantiated, but I keep asking myself to, to what motivation? Why would, why would America actually want to do this? Um, Afghanistan will cost America $3 trillion out to 2050 when you take into account all the veterans' welfare as well as operational expenses. And for me, there is just, there is just no uh, benefit whatsoever in conducting this activity to prolong any sort of presence within Afghanistan because, to me, the answer has never been a military solution. It's always been a political solution. The second reason that, that, that I'm slightly concerned about this is that President Karzai has chose to uh, make these accusations at a very political time. It's incredibly sensitive because we're in the handover from the West, giving the Afghan government complete autonomy. As I said, this is a political conundrum which needs a political answer. And it's not just from Kabul and, and Washington. We also need to look at Islamabad and Pakistan as well, because Pakistan and um, their influence and uh, the way that well, Washington negotiates with Islamabad is equally as important as um, loyalty and trust and, and well, political dialogue with um, Kabul. Well, here's the big problem, though. Karzai is aligning himself with the Taliban because the U.S. is getting out. He's trying to curry favor with the Taliban, so obviously he wants to trash us and do everything he possibly can to align himself with the Taliban. And what's also going to happen is we're going to lose the four bases that we'd hope to have in the four corners of Afghanistan. And those are the bases that we've been using to send drones into Pakistan to get al-Qaeda. If we lose those bases and as al-Qaeda builds up in Pakistan, this does not you know, suggest a very pretty picture in the future. I, I mean, I'm not pretending like I have the answer, but but I can certainly see the writing on the wall. No, I think what you were alluding to there, Gresham, is just the, the exact importance of, of Pakistan and Islamabad. There's a, uh, there's a network called the Hakwani, ne Hakwani Network, which operates under the Taliban in the southeastern frontier between Pakistan uh, and Afghanistan. And, and it's a well-known fact that the Pakistan military will not conduct operations against high-value al-Qaeda and Taliban um, assets in the Pakistan area of that frontier. So there's a political, serious political issue there. So I think, I think it's definitely something that, that we have to keep negotiating with is bringing Pakistan in to these conversations. But uh, it's indeed, it's getting, uh, I think it's getting more perilous as time goes on, and Karzai won't sign that agreement with the United States. I don't know what's going to happen, but it doesn't look very pretty to me. Anyway, Michael, thank you for joining us. I hope you come back. Thanks for having us.